Hello and welcome to Daily Reflection with Anil Arana. Today is the 18th of November 2019. We're going to reflect on Luke 18, 35 to 43. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him, and when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And the man said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has saved you. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God and All the people, when they saw it, praised God, the gospel of the Lord. One of the stories I often tell because of the number of lessons that it provides is of a rich young man who once went to Jesus asking for the secrets of eternal life. What would you do if you were a preacher looking for followers and a rich dude came to you with questions about the faith? Surely looked at him as someone who would be an asset to your ministry and seen how you could have recruited him. Jesus, however frightened him off. In sharp contrast, Jesus turns his attention to a beggar in this story. He's blind, and hearing the commotion around him as Jesus passed by, asked people near him what was happening. They told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He had obviously heard the stories about Jesus because he begins to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is the equivalent of calling Jesus the Messiah, indicating the beggar recognized who he was. And in the recognition, the certainty that he could be healed. So his cry is one of desperation and of persistence. Ignoring people around him who told him to shut up, he continues pleading loudly until Jesus takes notice. Jesus orders. The use of that word is something for you to think about if you get the time. Jesus orders the man to be brought to him and then asks him, What do you want me to do for you? Why ask the obvious question? As I've stated many times in these reflections, there is power in the spoken word and vocalizing something serves to energize faith. It also helps to determine what the person really wants. When people come to me for counseling, whether it is seeking a solution to a problem with health, finances, relationships, or whatever, I invariably ask them two questions. One, why did you come to me? It isn't fishing for compliments. It is to determine what they are actually expecting to get out of the time spent with me. And from the time they take answering the question, you know that it isn't something that they have given thought to. But then they vocalize what they want in a specific manner, and that makes a lot of difference. Perhaps it is, you will help me save my marriage, which leads to the second question. Will you do what it takes? Again, they have to say that they will do what it takes because in my experience, people expect things to happen instantly. They don't. Miraculously, yes, because once they get Jesus into the picture, things will get resolved, but it isn't instantaneous. There is often a process and this takes time and effort. So is the person willing to do it? In the case of sicknesses, for instance, the root is often persistent and unrepented sin or unforgiveness? Is the person willing to do what it takes to rectify the problem? So what are you struggling with? Jesus asks the question, what do you want me to do for you? Think before you answer. The question is not as obvious as it seems. God bless you.